welcome to Hazelwood Christian Church and our first online worship service. Regardless of what hour it is, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Before we begin, I'd like to call us to worship. From busy weekday lives, we pause this hour, gathered as friends in spirit, to remember Jesus' last earthly night with his disciples. May we listen for God's invitations to personal discipleship and service, to communion with one another in spirit and with the Holy One. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. And would you please join Wendy and I as we sing the hymn, Called as Partners in Christ's Service. bow your heads with me in prayer. Loving Christ, on that night long ago, you knew that your hour had come. You knew full well what lay ahead of you. Your disciples loved you and followed you, but they had also failed you. They would fail you yet again that night, and one would betray you. Yet you washed their feet as a servant would, even the feet of your betrayer. We have also loved you and followed you. We have also failed you, and we cannot comprehend the love that you show us, the love that is our example, the love that tells us to do as you have done for us. May we be like you, Master, servants of all, May all see how we long to be your faithful disciples. May all see how we love each other, just as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. And I'm going to read from today from the Common English Bible. So hear these words of scripture, beginning with John 13, 1. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. And Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. 
that the devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus, Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wet wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. And Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head. And Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is, cl is clean. And after he washed his, the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly because that's what I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example just as I have done, you must, you also must do. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we are in our third week in our series about things that we do that help us in our walk with God. And I want to stay with that, that series, even though we're in sort of extraordinary circumstances and, I'm, and we're worshiping in this way during this unique time in our country. Uh, but we've talked about worship and prayer and study. And today I want to talk about service. And I think that that has something uh, special for us in this time. And I'm going to get to that as, as we go along. Now, the story that you just heard, uh, that I just read with you uh, from the Gospel of John, we often hear on Monday, Thursday. And I often say, as, as we hear that, I, I say, if you have one last lesson to teach, one last word to get across, to, what would it be? And I've, I've said before that, that those, the things that happen in the movies where someone is gathered, um, when the family is gathered around someone on their deathbed and they have one last little speech and then they, they, they perish, that, that usually doesn't happen. Uh, that's usually only for the movies. But if you could, if you could get one last lesson across, what would you tell your family, uh, your friends? Would you tell them that you love them? Uh, would you remind them? to do something, uh, be good to one another, don't forget to pay the house payment. I, if you have one last word, what would you get across? Well, we're told that Jesus here, that Jesus, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. And Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. So basically, Jesus understands his time is short. He has his time with his disciples is short. He has one last opportunity to get something across to them here. So what would he do? One last little bit of teaching. Tell them don't mess up. Tell them to remember everything. Um, well, he does this. He got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, poured water into a basin, and he began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel. Now, now think about it. Uh, in Jesus' culture, they pretty much walked wherever they went. No paved roads, um, walking along dirt roads. They wore sandals. Uh, they didn't have running water. They don't have the regular baths and showers that we have. It was a much dirtier world. And, and washing feet was a necessary thing, but not a fun thing to do. And let's face it, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. Feet can be a little gross and a little smelly. And this would have been a job a, a servant would have done. Uh, the Sort of a, a very much a minimum wage job, not some a, uh, a job for someone like Jesus. But here, Jesus does it. Now, Jesus, after this, will go on in the Gospel of John and talk for several chapters, and he has lots to teach them, lots to get across to them. But I wonder if maybe this act of service, uh, this thing that he did, said as much as anything else that he would speak to them. Now, 
If you know the world of sports, and this is kind of a dry time for sports because uh, our, our, our sports are on a pause right now, but if you know the world of sports, you know the name Ernie Johnson Jr. He is a nationally known sportscaster uh, in basketball and baseball as well. He's also a, a very dedicated Christian. And he and his wife started adopting kids. And they have uh, two biological children, but they adopted two kids from the foster system. They adopted one from Paraguay and one from the country of Romania, uh, their son, Michael. And uh, Ernie Johnson's wife was uh, visiting an orphanage in Romania. And she came across Michael, this, this little boy who had all kinds of health challenges and was not doing very well. And she called up her husband, uh, Ernie, and she told him uh, about Michael. And his response was, bring him home. Um, I love that. Bring him home. And Michael has had all kinds of health challenges. He, as he was adopted at three, he couldn't walk or talk. Uh, they learned um, as he grew that he has a type of muscular dystrophy, which causes his, his muscles to decay. And now that Michael is in his 20s, he needs around-the-clock care. He has a wheelchair to, to get him around. He has a tracheal tube to help him breathe. It requires regular suctioning. Um, and Ernie Johnson and his wife do much of the care. Now, they have an overnight nurse who helps him as well. But through the day, Ernie Johnson and his wife, they care for their son, Michael. Now, he could afford... Uh, I'm sure he does pretty well financially, and he could afford uh, to pay someone to care for Michael. Uh, he could afford to put him probably in a very nice uh, home. And uh, no, no guilt at all when families make those choices, sometimes out of necessity that it requires families to, to do those kinds of things, and sometimes it's the loving thing. But he himself, he does it. He helps care for his son. And I'm wondering, I, you know, I don't know, but I'm wondering if he understands that he himself, Ernie Johnson, he needs to serve. Because that's the lesson that Jesus is getting across to his disciples here. That It says that Jesus, after doing this, this washing of his disciples' feet, he starts to explain to them the lesson uh, that he's just taught them. He says, you call me teacher and Lord. He says, that's what I am. He says, if I, your teacher and your Lord, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. He says, for I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. Now, is Jesus just talking about washing feet? Um, no. He's talking about something bigger than that, I think, and that's serving one another, caring for one another, doing the hard work of loving and looking after one another. Because I think what Jesus is saying is when we do that, when we serve one another, we not only do good for the person to whom we're serving, but we also we not only help heal the person we serve, but we heal our own heart and we heal the world around us. Uh, the youth and, and some of the adults, we um, in December after church, we went to some nursing homes and we sang Christmas carols uh, to some of the folks in our church who are in nursing homes. And speaking for myself on that day, I was tired, um, and we had had church, then we had lunch, and, and the youth, we helped wrap some of the gifts that we gave as a part of our Christmas box, and, and by the time all of that was over, I was tired, and I know that some of those who, who went kind of felt the same way. I mean, we were just, we were running on empty at that point. But we went to those nursing homes, and we gathered in rooms uh, where some from our church were, and we sang with them, and prayed with them, and met with them. Uh, one guy, in fact, uh, was not a part of our church, uh, heard what we were doing and invited us in, wanted to, us to sing with him and pray with him as well. And they were all so happy to have us. But when we left, uh, when we got in our cars to go, I, I know we all felt better. And we all said, I'm really glad that we did that. Now, why, why did we feel that way? Think about it. Were we just doing good to the people to whom we visited and, and to whom we sang? No. We were doing our own hearts good as well. As we sang with them and as we prayed with them, we sang the good news that Christ has come, the good news that we're not forgotten in this world, but God has sent a Savior among us. And our own hearts were healed in the serving and in the care and in the attention that we gave to these that were, were confined to, to nursing homes. And our own hearts were healed in ways that I can't even explain. You see, and you know this, sisters and brothers, you know this, when we serve one another, we not only follow Jesus' example, 
You know, it's not just, and it's not just about uh, helping the person we serve. It is. Don't forget that. I mean, if if it's not, then then we need to think other ways that that we can be of help in this world. But we are also, when we do that, we are drawn into community and connection with the people whom we serve. It's about meeting Jesus in the needs of this world because Jesus told us when we do it for the least of these, we're doing it for him and we find Christ as we serve in those needs in the world. And when we do that, we're pulled out of our own selfish world and we're placed into a community where we're drawn together in God's care and love. And when we serve, when we do these acts of service, we become a part of that. You see, when we follow Jesus' advice and we find a way to serve, it's not only about the person we serve. It's being drawn, it's about being drawn into God's community as we do that too. Now we've got a way uh, to serve right now. Um, because we're meeting this way uh, through through a uh, computer, through this, this, this video, because we're worshiping in this way, it's because of something very significant that's happening in our nation and our world and the virus, the COVID-19 virus that has, is moving through and we're making sense of the fact that it is here and it is coming. And so I don't need to tell you that it's a really big deal. And let me say, and I don't say this just meaninglessly or, or without any thought, um, I say it with, with meaning, and that is, we'll get through this. Uh, we, will, we will get through this. And there will come a time where this will all be a story that we tell. We'll say, remember back when uh, all of this was happening. In the meantime, though, uh, as this is happening, we can serve one another. There's probably someone you know who is elderly, who is alone. I thought about, as, as all of this was starting to happen, I thought about my, my many years where, as a single person where I lived alone, and I thought, boy, this would be a really lonely time if I was on my own. So if you know someone like that, uh, call that person. Make sure that person's okay. We are very much, I believe, our brothers and sisters keepers. So don't ignore those people like that. This is a time for us, even though we're practicing social distancing and we're, we're trying to, to, to be apart so that the virus can't spread easily, be sure and reach out. And we've got wonderful tools to do that, the tools of technology, whether that's a phone or computer or, or, or however you, you can reach out, reach out to that person. But it's also not just in reaching out and showing care and love to people like that. The things that we do in this time, like regular hand washing, uh, using hand sanitizer, being careful about how we interact, uh, holding off on shaking hands, things like that. We do them not just for ourselves. We do them not just to keep ourselves well. That's part of it. Uh, but we do them to help those most vulnerable sisters and brothers because while many who will get this, will be okay. Um, I've heard like about 80% of the people who, who get this virus um, have minimal symptoms, that it's, it's, it's something that they get over um, very, fairly easily. But for some, for 20 or 10% or, or so, or even less, it may be something significant. And for a few, it's an extreme crisis. And so we do those things like hand washing. We do those things like minimizing the amount of physical interaction we have with other people. We do that not just for ourselves, but we do it for each other so that the virus doesn't quickly spread. It doesn't overwhelm our healthcare system. We do it for the, the least of these in our world and in our culture because we're looking out for them and we don't want the virus to spread easily and quickly. We do it for our healthcare professionals so that they are not overwhelmed all immediately with a whole bunch of people who are sick. Um, so we're looking out not just for ourselves when we do those kinds of things, but we're serving others when we do them. We serve each other when we do these taking care of things in this time. We're looking out for our friends and our neighbors as we do. We use this as a chance to serve one another. You see, sisters and brothers, when we serve each other in whatever way we can, we are drawn together. We are connected with our sisters and brothers. We renew ourselves, our community, and our world when we serve, as Jesus asked us to. Jesus washed feet 
He invites us to do the same as well in whatever way we can. Uh, Amen. Well, sisters and brothers, as we're gathered in worship in this unique way, I think one of the most important things that we can do, even as we are physically apart, is to pray together. And so I invite you to pray with me now. Faithful and loving God, you know us, and you know our needs, and you know that there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear within us. As news has come day after day about COVID-19 and the needs in our world and our community, our nation, and what we need to do, we are worried, we are confused, and we are afraid. And so we ask simply that you would be with us. Let us know that you're close. Bring comfort to our hearts. We pray that even in this midst, even in this time of great need, that you would bring peace. We pray that you would give us wisdom and help us to make good choices about how we live and the ways that we interact so that we can help one another and we can serve one another. We pray that you would help those who are bringing care, those who are in the medical professions and those who are uh, helping those who are sick and give them safety, uh, give them encouragement, Help them in the crucial and important work that they're doing, and we pray that you would bring healing through their work. Help those two who are making decisions, our leaders in our community and our nation and our world. Give them wisdom. There are hard choices to be made, and we pray that you would help them make those decisions well. We pray that even in this time of deep need, that we might be a people of service and care. And so use all of us so that the world around you, around us might know that you're here. Be in our work. Make us channels of your peace to the world around us. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Sisters and brothers, it's been so good to be together here in our time of worship, even as we are physically apart. And as we end our time of worship, uh, the blessing that I want to share with you is one that's heard again and again throughout Scripture. And you hear these simple words repeated so many times, and it's, be not afraid. Uh, Don't be afraid. Uh, This is a time of great fear, but as we go, do not be afraid. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Grace and peace to you all. May you go in God's peace.